All right, great to be here. Uh, and we're here to talk about interoperability, and there is no way, better way to start talking about the East and state in the, the state for the blockchain ecosystem these days. It's so fragmented, right? And on the user perspective, this is so limited. Uh, the user is trying to do stuff, and it's so hard to try to achieve some stuff. Like, in some cases, even impossible trying to do some some things. And we understand that each network has its own way to handle security, privacy, and governance. And we really believe that that's the way the things should should be done. Uh, we don't believe on the statement that uh, it should have a single chain to rule them all. We believe and we agree that this is how network uh, should be, with all the diversity, with all networks and chains uh, doing their best. But instead of silos, we should be looking for ways to, to do connections or to create connections, because that way we'll be uh, creating and expanding capabilities, not only on the user perspective, but also uh, on, on, even for the blockchain itself, right? Because if each blockchain can connect with each other, they can expand what they can achieve. And, and we all know how, how hard it is to connect with traditional rails and traditional infrastructure already. So we should not allow that to happen on the blockchain space at all. We should find a way to connect the, the chains. And at the end, interoperability should not be just a word that we say on, on a conference, or on a speech, or that we do on a side project. It should be something that we perceive every day to, to deliver and to, to create. It should be a, a reality. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Doug, um, which is Cake Labs. We are a decade old software design engineering company from Brazil, operating with companies here in the US. We start mainly with Web2 development 10 years ago, but five years ago, we have also started delivering Web3 solutions. Uh, and we're proud to, to say that we are a Stellar Integration Partner for a couple of years and we have just announced that we are a Hyperledger uh, Foundation member or become a Hyperledger Foundation member. It's something that we're very proud and very excited to, to, to be and to, to, to just join the, this community. In terms of networks, uh, we deliver uh, strong on the Stellar Network, Hyperledger Network, EVMS Network like Ethereum, Polygon and also Solana. Uh, in terms of experience of what we have delivered already, uh, we do lots of blockchain consultants to help companies understand how to use blockchain uh, to deliver the solutions, but also asset tokenization, smart contracts, DeFi, and digital wallets. Uh, one use case or one recent project that might be familiar to, to a few folks is the monogram Nox Twitter wallet that's been delivered, which is GitLabs. But going back to interoperability, there is no better way to talk about this topic uh, if not mentioning the hyperledger tech time. And virtually, I'm not able to go over the full uh, capabilities of Cacti because this will require a full hour at least. And Cacti is an incredible project, incredible history. It was a merge of two different projects and can deliver so much. But in short words, uh, the Cacti is an interoperability framework uh, built and maintained by, by the Hyperledger community. Uh, I have had this, this article. It's a not recent one, it's a world one, but it's a very good one in terms of introduction because it explains not only how Cacti uh, works, but also the ethos behind Cacti, right? How, how it, it envision in design in terms of architecture. So it's a good starting point for the, the folks who want to know more about this project. But there are key elements that worth mentioning and worth uh, talking so that we can all understand like the thing that we're about to announce, uh, which are the key elements of Cacti. Uh, so Cacti is built to be extensible, to be uh, pluggable. Uh, and it's a framework at the end, right? So. It, 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 it was designed with plugins in concept, right? Um, and the plugins, it's, it, it's how you can extend the capabilities of Cacti. The, the lowest level uh, in terms of plugins is, are the connectors. Uh, and the connectors are the layer that connects uh, Cacti with the ledgers. Uh, so we have one connector to each ledger. So I believe we have already a bunch of uh, connectors there. We have for Air3 Corda, we have for Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Bezo, and a few others. Uh, and then on the second layer, we have the application layer, where you create all the business logic for your use case, right? For the interviewing case that you are delivering. And with Cacti, it's also very interesting that you can deliver that in two different ways. Uh, you can go with a centralized uh, architecture, where you can have a single service that can handle the whole orchestration for everything. Uh, so, for example, here on this node server, uh, this application, this service actually is connecting to connector A and connector B and doing the whole orchestration for the interviewing use case. Or you can go with a decentralized approach. Uh, where we have a single service to handle uh, pieces of you uh, of your use case, and then they communicate between each other through a relay system, which also a great uh, 
decision with uh, a great functionality of Cacti because the relay handles the communication, uh, signature, and all of that between the, the two services. Uh, and we're here to announce a Stellar Connector for Cacti. So we are launching uh, these in the next couple of days. So now everyone who uses Cacti will be able to also interrupt with the Stellar Network. Uh, here I uh, have uh, the link to the to the branch uh, that's now being revealed by the community, so everyone can uh, take a look and start using already. Uh, and basically, this this connector can uh, allow you to interact with the Stellar Ledger. And not only the like we deliver not only the the connector, but we want to implement a, a real use case uh, with this connector, right? So that we can uh, use like create a demo for people to to have a starting point if they want to create something. Uh, so we did a demo that bridged an asset between Stellar Soroban and Hyperledger Bezel. Uh, and, and this demo, uh, we'll talk about all the steps for, for the user case in the demo, but just so that you can all understand like, the architecture behind of this demo. And so going back to my first explanation about how Cacti works, so here we have three layers, right? We have the user uh, who wants to send or transfer an asset uh, to another user. So for example, Alice uh, on one network wants to transfer an asset to Charlie on another network. Then on the second layer, we have the application layer. Uh, going back to my point about uh, Cacti having plugins, uh, they also have a, a plugin called Hermes, who implements the uh, SATP, which is a protocol to secure uh, transfer assets uh, or to orchestrate that uh, on multiple net networks. So we have this, uh, the service layer, this application layer, sorry, who implements the, this plugin and then implements this protocol. And then uh, we have two uh, methods inside of it, one to handle the specifics uh, for Bezu and the specifics for Stella related to, to the protocol. And then the application layer connects to the plugins and then the plugins will send the comments to the, to the ledger, invoke contracts uh, and all of that. But now talking about the user case, so what we're trying to achieve is we want to allow Alice who has uh, uh, an account on Stellar to send funds to her friend uh, on the Bezo network. So the steps for us to achieve that is at least we need to send funds to a bridge service account in Stellar. Uh, and this bridge is, is, is uh, powered by, by Cacti, right? So the infrastructure behind scenes is the Cacti uh, infrastructure. So the bridge will lock those funds uh, as you scroll and generate a unique uh, reference number. At any given moment, Alice can signal that she wants to move uh, those the, 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 these scroll funds to her Bezu account. And now that the collateral is safely stored in the Stellar network, uh, Bridge will issue a representation of the funds in the Bezu network uh, and send to uh, Alice's wallet on the Bezu network as well. Alice can then send the Bezu tokens to her friend Charlie, and that's it. Charlie can, can do whatever uh, he wants with that. Uh, one, one interesting decision in terms of design that Cacti did uh, as well is that uh, at any given moment, Charlie or anyone who received those funds, uh, they can bridge back those funds and, and unlock those funds on the, on the Stellar Bank uh, again. So I will show this on the demo, but it's, it's a very interesting uh, use case. So here is the, the demo in action. So uh, in this case, we have the Stellar uh, wallet. So we have Alice wallet and Charlie uh, wallet on the Stellar network. And we're just set setting up stuff. So we are adding funds to Alice wallet. So we just had a thousand CBDCs. Uh, and we'll transfer a portion to Char on the Stellar network. And we did that just to prove that this is a real asset, right? That's on the Stellar network. So we're transitioning those assets. Uh, and then with that done, uh, Alice can now escrow uh, an amount, in this case, 250. Uh, and then this amount will be locked into the bridge. Uh, so, and also together with the, the amount on the bridge, we have the reference number. This is very important as this is the unique number uh, for, for those funds. We also do the same for chart, but this is just for demo purpose. Uh, with that done, with the, with the amount scrawled on the Stellar network, now at least can bridge uh, those funds from the Stellar to the Bezu. And this is where everything happened, right? Where we lock the funds and we issue, uh, we mint the, the funds on Bezu and send to Alice Network, to Alice Wallet on Bezu. So we can see that the the, the locket amount will now go to the, to the Bezu Network. And with that completed, then Alice can send from her Bezu Wallet to Charles Wallet. And then Alice, uh, Charles will have those funds to, to use. About the thing that I mentioned, so now that Charlie has the fund, he can also do the same. He can scroll any amount uh, and lock those funds and then bridge back those funds to his wallet on the Stellar Network. And then that way we complete the interval we uh, use case on sending assets from Stellar sort of to Bezo Network. There is much more to come. We, we want to continue improving the SATP implementation uh, about this protocol. We want to start supporting Stellar Classic as well. 
So the idea is for us to continue evolving this connector within the community. Uh, in terms of next steps, uh, there are four uh, short, short, short term things. So the connector should be uh, merged to the main branch uh, very soon. So uh, we should announce this. Uh, we have a few articles on how to use the connector, on um, how was uh, for us to integrate or, or develop uh, within the Cacti project. We'll be hosting a webinar so that we can present another use cases uh, related to this. And we're open to talk to anyone who has a, who have a real use case that we can implement using this connector uh, and hopefully bridging something in production between Stellar uh, and, and the Zoo. Uh, on, the, on the QR code, I have a, a call to action. If I want, anyone wants to add the, uh, like your email, uh, we can send you all of those informations later so that you can keep in touch with us. Thanks so much.